Hi everyone, my name is Rosia. And I'm Davod. I'm a first year going to second year medic at Trinity Hall, Cambridge. And I'm in the same year, but I'm going to King's. Today we are making a video for you guys about how to choose a Cambridge college. We hope that this video will list all the things that you should be looking out for when making an informed decision. And we have also gathered lots of contacts that we know from different colleges in Cambridge. So you can have the chance to email them or message them on Instagram to ask for any specific details which you might not be able to find on college websites. So the first factor we're going to discuss, and it's quite easy to find out, is the appearance of your college. So this means does it have old or newer kind of buildings um, and just generally what it looks like from the outside. And it's quite easy to find out from Google Maps and Google Images. So you don't necessarily need to ask students about that one. So, for example, there's a lot of newer colleges in comparison to old colleges, which might be different depending on what you want. So we would suggest going to an open day. When I went to the Trinity Hall's open day in 2019, it really felt like I could see myself spending time there. Would you like to talk about why you chose Kings? Yeah, so I chose Kings because it really is the face of Cambridge. Any postcard you get of Cambridge, Kings will probably be on there. And you can even see in the background how nice it looks. You can actually see the chapel just there. Um, and because of that, it was just the first one that came to mind really when I chose my colleges. And other colleges like Fitzwilliam or Churchill, for example, are quite polar opposites to Kings. So if you prefer a more kind of less grand college then that might be better for you. The second thing that we're going to mention is location. So this can vary depending on the year in which you're studying. So in Trinity Hall first year accommodation is different to second year which is a lot further out which is also different to third year. The central teaching, eating and supervision library place is usually in a central location which is very central for Trinity Hall and that can really change your experience of Cambridge, especially if you live in a far away college like Homerton or Girton. And it also varies depending on your department. So let's talk more about that. Sure. So for Kings, it's very convenient because I'm around a five minute walk away from most of the medicine labs. So Monday morning, 9 a.m. dissection, uh, I can wake up I'd like to wake up early, but I could wake up much later if I wanted to. Mm. Whereas if I was at Girton going for dissection, um, the bike ride is about 15 minutes, the walk is 50 minutes. Um, so it really does add up. Yeah. Um, and that's why Girton isn't actually part of Cambridge, it's a whole separate town, really. Uh, is it? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I didn't know Girton that. is a town, and then Girton College is in Girton. <laughs> no way. Yeah, yeah, it's completely separate. That's crazy. Yeah. At least it has a swimming pool. Um, if you go to a college as far away, make sure you invest in a bike, make sure you know how to ride a bike, mm -hmm. because that time does add up and it really does matter. Mm -hmm. um, inconveniently for me, the two friends from school that came to Cambridge with me, one of them goes to Homerton, one of them goes to Girton. So they're opposite parts of Cambridge to each other, and I'm right in the middle. Mm -hmm. um, so they're always like... Um, panting when they come and see me because they've been on their bike for quite a while. <laughs> some people do like the kind of separateness from Cambridge because mm. it gives you some headspace because Cambridge terms can be quite intense. Yeah, and you can avoid the tourists in that way if you're a bit further away. Mm. Uh, and some people do prefer that, but it's just not for me, but it is for some people. Mm. Okay, so mm. another thing to consider is admission statistics. And we've recorded a tutorial in this video of how to check the statistics specific to your college and specific for a certain subject as well. Um, and it's really something to take into account uh, and not something to skip out on because it's widely available as well. Mm. So part of the reason why I chose Trinity Hall is because admission statistics were slightly more in my favour compared to more competitive colleges like Trinity, for example. So I didn't want to risk it too much as I knew I wanted to study in Cambridge. So the college wasn't like the most major factor for me. Yeah. Another thing which you might want to consider if you're very sure about what subspecialty in your subjects you want to go for is fellows. So everyone has a different subspecialty, like my d director of studies is a nephrologist. So maybe if you're really into kidneys, you, want to, you might want to apply to Trinity Hall too. And yeah, that can really help in setting up um, placements, which we'll talk about later in terms of networking um, mm -hmm. for the summer and it can really help direct your career path. 
The next factor which we think is really important is accommodation. So this includes factors such as whether you have kitchens, how many people share a kitchen, the facilities in the kitchen, en suites, which you said was really important for, for you. For me, it's quite important, yeah. Also balloting, which is basically the order which you get to choose your room in second and third year and beyond which can be dependent on different factors. So at Trinity Hall, it's random, but we know for some other colleges like Trinity, it might be dependent on what grade you get at the end of first year. Or in Peterhouse, they sometimes take into consideration whether you're part of the choir or play a university sport. Also, there's things like a double, bre a double, <laughs> double bed and pricing. Do you want to go into how you chose your accommodation? Yeah, so at King's there really wasn't too much information before I applied. So I'm really lucky that I got an accommodation I was happy with. It was actually recently refurbished for my year, so I was the first to live in that refurbished oh, wow. room. Very much looked like a Premier Inn, because <laughs> King's has a has a thing with purple. Um, so that was a colour scheme of my room. And it was really nice, it was en suite. Kitchen was nice as well. Mm. They provided stuff such as a rice cooker, oh. uh, a microwave, even a George Foreman grill. Whoa. Like panini kind of press thing. They provided it for yeah, you? Yeah, yeah, no it's way. all there already, yeah. So I was really surprised by that. Yeah. Um, but I was lucky, you know, really I should have done a lot more research into it mm. by contacting students, as you'll be able to if you just watch further into this video. Another thing that I regret is um, I didn't look into whether my accommodation had an oven in the kitchen. And for me, I'm not really one to cook. I can, but I, I don't like to. I, but I do like baking. Um, and it's not really something I was able to do in first year. I was able to do it once. And that was me going to another person's accommodation, which was a whole, uh, a whole journey in itself. Um, <laughs> it was worth it. They were good cookies. Um, but if that's something that matters to you, just look into what facilities your kitchen has because it can really dictate what your diet is like for the year mm. and whether you're eating healthily or not. Wait, so where did you go to bake your cookies? So I went to Spalding, which is the other King's accommodation. Okay. Um, but they don't have en suites. Uh, and for me, an en suite is more important than an oven. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And for Trinity Hall, like we don't have kitchens for first year, but that balances out with the fact that our servery has very cheap food. So I just ate there. But as Davod said, like diet is very important because if you don't have a good diet, you're not, you can't concentrate when you study. Another thing to consider that isn't really advertised in terms of accommodation is the price per week. Mm -hmm. So this differs based on location. Kings can get quite expensive because it's a central college and any accommodation in the centre is going to have a higher rent charge. Mm. Whereas accommodation further away from the centre of town is going to be a lot cheaper and therefore it's definitely something to ask students about. Wait, if you don't mind sharing, how much was your accommodation per week? Sure, so my accommodation per week was £180 per week. Okay. Um, whereas at other colleges you can find it for, I think, even £100. Mm. Um, and you know, £80 difference per week obviously adds up yeah. um, and it can completely change how much of your maintenance loan you're using mm. or whatever other sources of income you have. Yeah. So mine was 124 a week, but I didn't have an ensuite and it was like right next to a really busy street. So I'd get woken up at 7am every morning by a garbage truck. It, I didn't matter too much because I <laughs> spent most of my time outside my room. Another aspect of accommodation is laundry because you want to stay clean as a uni student. Yeah. So for Trinity Court, it costs three pounds if you want to wash and dry your clothes. But for King's, what is it like? So King's, it's uh, a flat rate of two pound per week, whether you use it or not, oh, wow. which is good if you do a lot of laundry, mm. bad if you don't really do laundry. So do your laundry. <laughs> and for other colleges, we know like St. John's has free laundry and Emma does your laundry for you. Yeah. So if you're someone who goes through a lot of dirty clothes, Emma might be the right college for you. Another thing to consider that also isn't too well advertised by the colleges is what they offer in their servery and specifically dietary requirements. So King's, for example, has halal meat, and that's not something that was advertised previous to this year, but it's been halal for a couple of years now, um, which is a nice surprise if you come to King's and then just find out that it's halal once you ask them. Mm -hmm because it can mean you can just freely eat meat every day mm -hmm. and you don't necessarily have to cook for yourself whenever you want meat. Mm -hmm. um, but it's something that's very dependent on the college. Um, and as I said, a lot of colleges don't end up advertising it. So it's important that you ask a student there, 
um, or contact admissions uh, at that college specifically so that you can find out about that. Yeah. And I think if you're a vegetarian or vegan, then Trinity Hall is a great place to be because we have two, at least two vegetarian options a day, vegan slash vegetarian. Mm. And on Mondays, it's always meat free Mondays. Nice. Is it? Uh, are you vegetarian yourself then? No. I'm not. Oh, okay. Um, another thing linked to servery, because a lot of your formals might be in servery, such as at King's, um, is uh, formals and how often they are, how much they cost and generally what you can expect from a college formal. Mm. So what's a Trinity Hall formal like? So ours has two formals a week on Thursdays and Sundays. They're in the evening from about 7 to 9.30 and you pay about £14 if you're a member and £20 if you're not a member of the college. So it's a great place to invite family and friends to. Um, and we wear gowns and have a three-course meal. What about at King's? At King's they're a lot less frequent. Um, mm typically once a week but there'll definitely be weeks where there isn't one mm. um, and they're also very different because they're always themed at King's so whether it be themed for Valentine's Day, mm. for Christmas, Oktoberfest, Harry Potter mm. and because of that they tend to be a lot more expensive than other colleges mm -hmm. so at King's for a member it's around £25 for a guest ticket it's a bit more expensive than that um, and also because there's so few of them, it's very difficult to actually get a ticket to a formal. Mm -hmm. um, whereas I've known, I know that other colleges, um, there's actually spare tickets every now and then, uh, mm -hmm. and still space within the formal. And there's this thing in Cambridge on Facebook called formal ticket swap, thing, mm. like ticket bridge, and you can like change, exchange formal tickets anyway. <laughs> yeah, I know some formals are definitely a lot more in demand than others, mm -hmm. such as the Homerton, um, Harry Potter formal has real mm. owls flying around the hall. Really? Yeah, Have yeah. you been? No. <laughs> I've always heard of this stuff, but I've never been myself. It's crazy. Um, I don't even know that. So make sure to watch part two, where we're going to give a tutorial on how to access admission statistics specific to a college and specific to a course, uh, as well as discuss how to use the spreadsheet, which is linked in this description and the next video's description. Yeah. Thank you so much for watching. We hope you found this video helpful. Please click somewhere here to access Stafford's channel and the second part of the video. Thank you for watching and thank you for clicking too. Bye. Bye.